Hey everyone, it's Tedley here, and this is I Like to Watch, and this is season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race Meet the Queens. As of yesterday, there was a leak of a preview of sorts saying that there was going to be like a six lip sync extravaganza episode one, which I don't think we were supposed to know yet, allegedly. However, word is that the show leaked that footage themselves because they wanted everyone to see the Meet the Queens today. And of course, so with the news of all this shit dropping, the fans online were speaking out. Is there no theme this time around? If RuPaul isn't releasing a new album next couple of weeks, I'm not having it. I wanna cry. I see there's new queens. Don't bully them. I've done a show for one of the new Drag Race girls for free, and she couldn't even be bothered to follow me on Insta. Didn't like the theme. Oh. So every year during Meet the Queens, I count down who I think left the best impression from number 13, the queen that I didn't really know enough about, to number one, the queen I'm like, hell yes, bitch is gonna win it. I'm doing exactly the same here right now this year. In addition to looking at the Meet the Queens, if I happen to know who they were before, like if I were following them on Twitter, of course that comes into account on this list. But for the most part, I'm looking at who, when we're taking a look at the Meet the Queens, who showed up, who did drag, and who entertained us at home. All right, number 13 on my list is Denali, the queen who lives in Chicago, but from Alaska. And she has, you know, a few years of drag under her belt, but she is a younger queen. But so like she said, she's like an ice skater bitch. She like does these athletics and shit. So let's see if she really can back that shit up and do some splits, kicks, twirls, all that other shit we love to see on this show. And we got two Chicago queens this year. I'm excited for Denali Fox. <laughs> Number 12 on my list is Lala Ree. And so she came in looking beautiful and colorful and she had tons of personality. My number one concern though is she's only like three years in so she said she was kind of like the baby queen herself. So you know, I've heard some good things so far but let's see what happens. Number 11 on my list is Olivia Lux. She's a New York queen. She's also a claimed alleged baby queen. And so she said she was starstruck seeing some of these bitches in the workroom. And so her image to me was good. Her personality was good. So clearly she has some shit to bring up into the competition. Her makeup was good. I thought she looked really cute. And also per the leaked preview, we already saw her boy side. So you know what? I'm gonna be okay with seeing her boy side and seeing her girl side. Number 10 on my list is Kamora Hall. Now she comes from Chicago and she has about eight years experience. She said do and drag and she's this glamour queen. She's fabulous. She doesn't do pageants. She is a ballad bitch, she's been saying. And so I'm excited to see what she brings. I mean, she has these amazing cheekbones, bitch. Like, so, I mean, she already has the mug in the face. Does she have the talent to back it up? Number nine on my list is Elliot with two T's. And so this queen comes from Las Vegas currently, and she's a choreographer. And it sounds like she is like a skilled, talented bitch. Now I will say in the interview, it looked like she was applying for like an office job, not to be on RuPaul's Drag Race. Elliot, as well as a lot of these earlier girls on the list, I feel like they didn't like pull out the like drag personality for this Meet the Queens. It's like, come on, you know you're doing a drag show, right? You know you're trying to put on a big performance and have people watch. I mean, you need to come out the bat. Like, oh my God, Meet the Queens. If like, I mean, this is make it or break it just on day one. So speaking of big personalities, number eight on my list, I put Joey J. And so this bitch is exactly what I'm talking about. Came to the show with an extreme personality, an extreme vision of what they're trying to present. She came in saying, I do my natural hair, so this is just a dyed hair. I don't do wigs. I like to be like a power lesbian look. She had like the edge. She had the storyline. She had like her message that she was ready to present. And so I'm totally excited to see what Joey has to present. Number seven on my list is Rose. She is a New York queen. It sounds like she's been around the block for a minute here and there. I didn't get too much out of her Meet the Queens as far as her background, what she can do anything. She had her deck of cards held tightly to her chest in this Meet the Queens because we really didn't get to see much about her or know much about her. I'm very much confused. Rose for the crown. Number six on my list is Tamisha Iman, the most experienced queen in the cut this time. She's a pageant queen, obviously. Have you seen that motherfucking hair? Have you seen the mug? Like, she is there to present pageant. 
her Meet the Queens was very pageant and she looked very beautiful. The fact that she is the drag mother of La La Ree definitely adds some dynamic there to the storyline. I'm sure that's going to be something. I sure hope it is. Maybe we'll get a lip sync mother versus daughter, which I think would be a very first on just a regular Drag Race season, which would be fucking crazy. Number five on my list is Tina Burner, another New York queen. I was getting a little bit of Nina West vibes in the sense of professionalism, but campiness. Been around the block for a minute. She said she was like 39, you know, so she's a full grown adult. And so we're gonna see what she can do and bring to this competition. She looks fun. It looks like she knows what drag is about. She looks like she knows how to do drag. And then from my home state, the same state, mind you, that brought you the great talents of Mercedes Amon Diamond, that brought you BB, that brought you Manila Luzon. Now we bring in you Utica. And I will say, oh my God, when she said she was from Utica, Minnesota, and then I saw her outfit, I'm like, just so everybody out there knows, in Minnesota, we don't all dress like we're from Little House on the Prairie or some shit. But she made it this high up on the list, not because she's from Minnesota, but her personality, like seriously, like I'm saying, someone that comes to the fucking Meet the Queens ready to do drag and perform. She was there acting goofy, she had all the crazy answers, she was a crazy poopy person. Number three on my list is Gottmik, who is like someone I've been following on Twitter for a long time. So I'm like, yay! Gottmik is a trans male, which is a first for Drag Race. I am super excited that Drag Race has included a trans male this time around. However, I will say it's been a long time in coming, and the Boule Brothers and Camp Wanakiki is kind of killing it with their diversity. Representation is important. Congrats on being the first of many. This is a Got Mick Stan account. A very special congrats to Got Mick making he slash hipstery as the first trans male contestant on Drag Race. Throwing a trans person onto a historically transphobic show without addressing or apologizing for the previous 13 years of transphobia is not accountability. I'm glad to see the show change, but let's still hold RuPaul's Drag Race accountable for their harm. But as far as Got Mix Drag is concerned, like, I was already blown away. Like, it looks conceptual. It looks like someone's ready to do some drag. Number two on my list is Simone. And I was just blown away by the personality. I was blown away by her look. I've been hearing online that she is definitely a fan favorite and potentially a front runner. So I put her at the top of this list and I'm excited to see everything that she has to bring. Simone for the crown. Screaming. Congratulations to the Simone. I can't wait to see you take the crown on season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race. I couldn't be more proud. So as soon as the Meet the Queens came on and I saw who the fuck was on it, I was like, bitch, you already know who's number one on this list. And of course, that's gotta be Candy Muse. She the Dominican New York girl. But you know what, what's most important is she has that personality. All the other queens from Drag Race love her already. She has been like super followed on Twitter and shit. She is the drag daughter of Aja. She is the sister to Dahlia Sin. She comes from the house of Aja, so you can expect high energy. You can expect craziness, humor, goofiness, fabulousness, some melanin up in this bitch. You can expect all that and more from the House of Aja. So I'm excited to see her finally on this show. And oh my God, the Meet the Queens was so hilarious too. She did a fucking amazing job. I'm like, yes, bitch, you show up, you kill this. My baby made it. All right, so with that, you guys, I will see you guys for episode one. I'm super excited to be back. This was Meet the Queen's first impressions. What did you think? Who left the best impression for you? Who are you most excited to see? Tell me all about it, and I'll see you guys soon.